we finally got to work on the pile, the dogs worked more than anybody. So emotionally it was very stressful that way. I mean we wanted to help so badly as, as you would in that situation and unfortunately within the first couple of days we realized that we weren't going to be able to find anybody alive. Not all dogs are created equal. Some are born to be heroes. That rare dog with such drive and courage that it can only be fulfilled through a life of service. Within that hero breed exists the truly exceptional, the disaster search and rescue dog. The journey from puppy to hero is long and challenging. Only the best and bravest dogs will be successful. Join them on their path to becoming a search and rescue dog. Learn what happens before the barks. My name is Sheila McKee and I have been involved with search and rescue for almost 20 years now. Started off in Wilderness Search and Rescue with the Sheriff's Department and that evolved into uh, working in urban search and rescue with Riverside Task Force 6. We'll get killed by the horse. Then I also train both HRD, which are human remains detection dogs, and urban search and rescue dogs for private individuals as well as task forces and other agencies as well. The Federal Emergency Management Agency has 28 urban search and rescue task forces across the United States. Each task force can carry up to 12 canine search teams. The first large-scale FEMA deployment with canines was to the World Trade Center on 9-11. Two of the few remaining 9-11 dogs belong to Redlands Fire Battalion Chief David Graves and Sheila McKee. Kobe is a, uh, is a really big black lab. He's got a huge head and a big shoulder. He's a big, strong boy. And when he was at his working weight, he was almost 80 pounds. Kobe. And he's older now. He's got a white muzzle, and he totters around a bit. He cannot hear a thing. He's deaf as a stone. But he understands hand signals. Whenever we wave him over, he understands to come. If you gave him a toy, he will pick it up and carry it around. And that's about all he can do. He gets pretty tired now. He likes to sleep and lay in the sun a lot and, uh, you know, warm his old bones that way. So he'll go after it, okay? Guinness is a much smaller uh, yellow lab. He's still really energetic. He is still very bouncy. He can still see really well and he can still hear pretty well. And he will, he can bark at the alert hall. He likes to chase his toy. He's just as joyous as he was before. Since he's a yellow lab, his muzzle is pretty white, so he's got a few marks on his face. He definitely has um, some history on his face. Nearly a decade after spending 11 days searching in vain for survivors at Ground Zero, these two dogs still show what sets them apart from others. What made them heroes back then lives in them today. <laughs> the future generation of search dogs have Kobe and Guinness as their role models. They have big paws to fill. Before the Barks will introduce you to some of these hopeful puppies. Meet Molly, Parker, Raven, Buddy, Glory, Hopper and Harley. Which one of these puppies will be brave enough, tough enough, and smart enough to make the cut? When the next disaster strikes and the call comes, who will answer? Who will be ready to climb the next rubble pile? Join these puppies on their journey to becoming heroes. Find out who makes it and who doesn't. Learn what happens before the barks.
Good Lord, let her have it when you're ready. Good job, Glory. Get it, get it, get it. Are you a good guy? Huh? Yeah. Join us in episode two and discover what trainers like Sheila McKee look for in a search and rescue dog, even when that dog is only six weeks old. <laughs>